Hello everyone, welcome back to Reddo Reads. And as for this subscriber's request, today we have malicious compliance. If you want me to cover some particular subreddit in the next video, please leave it in the comments. Complain to everyone about your work if you must, but you done working here equals 10 years wages. So every morning I walk my dog at the off-leash dog park. It is a small town, all the dogs walkers have become friendly. I am in my mid-40s made friends with June, who is 75, 80 years old. June told me this lovely malicious compliance story from about 25 years or more ago. June was working as a school teacher and was retraining as a social worker. She left teaching for two years working as a social worker when her previous school asked her to run a class for at risk children. The deal was that she would teach children aged 12 to 18, grade 7 to 12, who come from backgrounds of emotional, physical, and other mistreatment. The job was casual, so she didn't get paid for holidays, sick leaves, etc. She was supposed to teach 6 kids with an 8, but ending up with 20 kids and no teacher's aid. As you can imagine, their behavior was terrible. She believed she could help and she said she did make some real differences. The work was really stressful, but she was passionate about it. After 3 years and multiple promises of making her a permanent staff member, getting an aid plus a smaller classes, June was burnt out. She demanded help from the principal, who refused and told her, since she complained, it's for the last time and sacked her. He told her she's casual and she go complain to everyone and everywhere, but as a casual worker, you have very little rights. So June did complain to everyone. School inspector, the union, department of education, it was a state school. And even her local member of parliament, who told her she has had a tough deal, but it is the life of a casual worker. She finally complained to the state authority that deals with safe work practices. They were interested, as the school has breached state policy on class sizes for special needs kids, teacher aides, providing a safe environment, etc. They ordered the Department of Education to pay her workers' compensation while they sorted it out. So now June was paid each fortnight, including leave and all benefits, 52 weeks per year, instead of 40. The fallout was big after the investigation. Lots of people sacked or moved on. What this did was leave June without a boss. The Safe Work Practice Department closes the case as they believe it was now a Department of Education matter to pay June out. Everyone has forgotten about June and she got lost in government paperwork. They still paid her and she kept quiet. It took 10 years before they found her in an employee audit. Then they paid her out. June was ready to retire about then, so it worked out beautifully. I love this story. I am all for justice. How is it legal? Can't they just ask the money back after 10 years? And as much as I root for June, I am worried about her. But again, as we can judge from the post, she got away with it. So, yay! Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, because I really want to get 25 more subscribers till the end of the week. So, if you subscribe, you will make my day. I can definitely get that sauce for you. I'm a server and I take great pride in my ability to efficiently run my section. The key is maximizing each trip to and from the kitchen. So rather than getting table 31 a refill, the table 32 more salt, then drop the check at 33, you check in at each table on your way to the back, grab everything in one go and head out to the dining room cutting down three trips to one. As long as the customer trusts me to do my job, we're all going to have a great experience. That said, my biggest pet peeve is when a customer asks every employee that passes their field of vision for the same thing. For example, extra range. Why is it always extra range? I am not talking about when you ask me for the range, then see me come from the back and it's clear I have forgotten it. I'm talking about when you ask me for more range, then three seconds later ask the food runner who just dropped off your fries for more range, 
Then the manager who topped off your water for more range. Then as three of us are in the back clamoring for the squeeze bottle like a bunch of religious zealots desperate to touch the hem of French God's buttermilk robe, a 4SM effort turns up telling us that the table 32 wants more range. My malicious compliance in those moments is that I make sure every single person that was asked drops their own ramekin of wrench off at the table. Then I come up last with the final ramekin and the biggest poop-eating grin you've ever seen. I completely ignore the fact that most of their table is now taking over with the little dishes of wrench, rearranging some if need to make more room for my final contribution. Because hey, if you asked four people for wrench, you must want a lot of wrench and isn't it great that you have it now? Meanwhile, the look of embarrassment or shame or even anger I get from the customer is enough to keep me from running head first full speed into a brick wall the next time someone yells at me because their ahe tuna poke appetizer has raw fish. Ooh, I love poke bowls. Never had one with tuna. Always go for salmon. Hmm. Oh, you made me hungry now. Well, now we know what I will have for lunch. Even though I love this malicious compliance, on the other hand, it is very wasteful. I understand it's not your range and we don't care about business owners because we are working people, right? But it's food waste. It harms our planet. And honestly, range and french fries. Hmm, I don't like that combo. But blue cheese, divine. What about you guys? What is your to-go sauce for your fries? I already said we were going to do it, so just do it. My coworker told me to share this here. New Reddit account because mine is super identifiable. I work on an IT team for a small company and one of the things we support are marketing campaigns for our company. So to set the cast, Let's call my boss Kathy and there is Peter, the sales manager. Peter has this brilliant idea of targeting a cross-section of two audiences for a new marketing campaign. He pitches it in the meeting and everyone gets super excited about this. After the meeting, Peter asks Kathy to set it up. Kathy pushes back immediately, saying she is confident that this new audience is not worth our time and it is maybe 200 potential customers out of 200,000. Now Peter has a lot of sway in the company and doesn't want to admit he made a mistake about his customers and said, well, I already said we were going to do it, so just do it. So I put in the requirements and it is worse than Katy thought, 47 people. Once again, this is escalated to Peter, who insists we just do it, and he complains we are behind schedule on getting this done. Admittedly, it has been a few business days because we did not prioritize this stupid request. I pass along the new audience to our marketing folks, who design a campaign, set up a couple of new pages on the website, etc. Now about profitability. Our average transaction sales are pretty small, but a lot of repeat transactions from our customers. But just with the time I've spent on it, there is no way this campaign is paying even my salary, much less everyone else who spent time on it. Kathy doesn't want me to spend another second on it, but Peter, who again we have kept in the loop this entire time, wants to see it on our Power BI reports for the sales team and the C suite. Normally, something this small would be rolled up into an other category, but hey, Peter wants to see it, so I make sure that it is listed. In the updated bar chart, there is a line of text at the bottom. No bar associated with it because after four weeks, clicks, two, sales, zero dollars. I was not on the meeting after this went live, but I heard Peter went on a long spiel about the growth potential of this new campaign. Kathy and I are confident he's going to put it in his self-review about how innovative it is, assuming he still has a job. Well, judging from his confidence, even while doing stupid things, he will have the job. Because as you said before, 
he has a lot of sway in the company. So maybe he has very good expertise in some other field, but he is a sales manager. So I am so puzzled because if you are the sales manager already, meaning that you had performed good before, but then you create a pinnacle of a marketing campaign that brings zero profits. So if we have any marketing people in the comments, please tell me how it makes sense. Using the system to defeat stupid requests. I've been at my new job long enough, I can share this now without feeling like there'd be blowback. I'm a web designer. Every place I've been, I get put in charge of the fleet of websites whatever company or group is running. And then I go through and do my thing, making sure the sites are tight, efficient and user-friendly as I can. Web designer is like any task, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And for websites, that means the designer in charge has to be the arbiter of clutter. If things get to be too much on a page or requests that would degrade the UI of the site come in, we have to reject them. We want sites to be fast, light and easy to use. Being the person in charge of the sites, I was generally the one to reject requests. We shouldn't do this because X, Y and Z reasons. I was told by my bosses that I couldn't say no and that I had to be customer focused even when the requests to update the site were coming from those without technical knowledge or the desire to understand what I was saying and the reason why I wouldn't do something. This could also go over r slash boomers being fools because most of the people that hated me, someone younger than them, telling them no, were also of that generational set. Regardless, after a number of times of them getting a no because, from me, them going over my head to my boss and then my boss saying, ah, oh, just do it, I had to come up with a solution. If they were going to go around my informal process based on my knowledge and experience, I would formalize it. At the organization I was working at, we had standards, which were signed off by the higher-ups and had the word of law and guidance, which did get some sign-offs, but didn't go through the length formalization process. Standards you had to follow, but everyone thought guidance worked the same way. That was the loophole. I wrote a 60-page web update guide going over everything in the process, ensuring that any question I would be asked anything that needed to get done, any stupid question that had come my way over the previous two years was answered. I then got my boss to sign off on it and then sent it around. I also posted it on the internal use portal. From that point forward, the guide was what we followed. Best part, and this is the malicious part, for those wondering, I never had to get any changes to the document approved. It was designed as a living document and I was this whole person in charge of it. Requester. Hey, I want to do this on the page. Me. Goes and adds the web update guide to specifically disallow what they were requesting. Oh, I'm sorry. As for the web update guide, we cannot do this. Worked like a charm and made my job easier from that day forward. I think this post is not only malicious compliance, but bureaucracy is my friend now. I just wonder that if somebody would find out that you are editing this document after every uncomfortable request you get, is it possible that OP will get backlash? Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, you can also watch that awesome video or this awesome playlist. See you next time!